It's Valentine's Day, the time of the year when corporations capitalize on your guilt through the sale of chocolates, roses, and cheap little teddy bears that say, I love you, when squeezed. And I think there's something about the celebration of love or something, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, we at How It Works are no better than those corporations as we're taking this commercialized holiday as an opportunity to teach you all about the science of love. Right now, cue the titles. First up, what is love? Other than the force behind the plotline of any Jennifer Aniston movie ever, love is also the force that pushes our survival as a species. Let's take a closer look at this by examining the commonly accepted three stages of falling in love. Lust. Remember puberty? God, I wish I didn't. During puberty, hormones like testosterone and estrogen become active in our bodies, creating the desire to experience sexual interaction with the opposite sex. Basically, we start hunting for a mate. Who we select as this mate depends on a number of factors, including looks and personality. Studies have shown that we also tend to be attracted to people with a different immune system than our own, as this results in a healthier offspring. So if you ever wonder why you broke up with that ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, you can just blame their immune system. Attraction. When you do spot the perfect hottie with those big brooding eyes and that certain special immune system, dopamine is released which produces a feeling of bliss. This chemical is also activated by cocaine and nicotine and leads to a loss of appetite and sleepless nights. So love truly is a drug. However, that doesn't excuse you from stripping naked and jumping on my car, holding up a boombox playing Kesha songs, Frank. Norepinephrine is also released, causing increased heart rate and sweating, while serotonin levels fall, causing you to begin to idealize your crush, becoming oblivious to their flaws. So yes, love is also blind. All the cliches are true, it's just science. Attachment. For a relationship to last beyond attraction and lust, a strong bond must form. This commitment is formed by two key hormones, oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin is also known as a cuddle hormone and is released when we hug, kiss and uh, you know. It helps establish trust and intimacy and is also released during childbirth, helping you strengthen the bond between mother and child. And maybe it keeps your mind off the fact that you just pushed something the size of a watermelon out of your body. Vasopressin is an antidiuretic hormone that encourages monogamy and protective behavior, while endorphins also play a key role in the attachment stage, suppressing pain and creating a sense of security. So there you have it. Your most precious relationships are just the result of conveniently released chemicals and hormones. Happy Valentine's Day! To discover more about the inner workings of our brain and body and other fun science facts, click the like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time.